Europa Universalis is a big game, especially with the Deluxe Edition where you can play up to six players. If you're new to the game, it's not a bad idea to learn how to set it up properly, and we'll teach you how to do that in just a few minutes here on Legendary Tactics. First of all, choose a scenario from the scenario booklet. This will determine which player realms will be involved in the game, among many other things. Once you've placed the map board on the table, place the player mats around the board in the order described by the scenario you've chosen. For this video, I will demonstrate this scenario here. Obviously, the specific setup will vary, but the general principles shown will be basically common to any scenario you choose. These are the action card decks, administrative, diplomatic, and military. Shuffle them up and place them beside the board, leaving space for each type to have a discard pile. Follow the scenario instructions to sort the trade deck, and then shuffle it and place it by the edge of the board as well. Event decks are set up according to the chosen scenario. Draw event cards equal to one more than the number of players, unless the scenario states otherwise. Place the first three event cards face up and the remainder face down. Shuffle the milestones for the first age that will be played and place one card from each deck on display face up. Find the three basic idea cards which have a green background and place them side by side face up. Then set aside all ideas marked with an age number higher than the first age of your chosen scenario and shuffle the remaining idea cards by type. Draw two cards from each deck and place them next to the basic ideas to form a 3x3 three three grid. Place the status mat next to the boards and then place cardinals and the imperial authority token according to the scenario setup instructions. Place a round status marker from each player in the event not taken space. Place this tray which stores the coins known as ducats or duka, rebel units and towns, mercenaries, etc. This is known as the general supply. Each player takes the player tray of their desired color and place the prestige markers of all players near the prestige track. Each player on their player boards places their stability marker at zero on the stability track and fills the town track with 20 small towns and eight large towns. On the vassal track, each player places one vassal token on the first spot of the track and two in every other spot of that track. Unless stated otherwise in this scenario, each player puts three monarch power cubes in each of their power pools, administrative, diplomatic, and military. Fifteen ducats are placed in their treasury. Each player then takes a look at their realm setup card, referencing the scenario setup notes, which lists their starting provinces, marked with an L, and starting ruler. Players set up their realms by taking towns and vassal tokens from their player mats as needed, remembering to always take from the lowest numbered slots from left to right. Then add a number of manpower units to the available manpower box equal to the total number shown on their town and vassal tracks, plus the imperial authority value for the emperor. Once this is complete, players draw from the available manpower pool to allocate units to starting armies listed in their setup. The miniatures for the starting armies and fleets are placed in the starting areas and unused armies and fleets on their corresponding mats. Players place any starting ships on trade protection slots in the sea zones listed or on the fleet mat. Players should also add any influence, cubes, merchants, alliance tokens, and royal marriage tokens to the map board as specified by the scenario. And the appropriate religion token should be placed in the state religion slot on their player mat. Once done, players slide their starting rulers underneath the ruler slots of their player mats, making sure that the appropriate ruler is face up. Now instead of the draw cards phase of the first round, each player, in turn order, draws one card from each of the action card decks, plus any other three action cards of their choice. Then players can appoint any advisors and leaders they have drawn into their hand, paying the hiring costs shown in the lower right corners. At no cost, each player may hold up to four action cards in their hand, discarding as necessary. Please note that the hand size limit at the end of phase five is five action cards. Finally, the last step is to distribute mission cards according to the scenario setup instructions. The default method is for each player to secretly choose two of the green starting missions from their mission deck to keep in their hand and set aside the rest for later. 
That's it, you're done. You've now set up your game of Europa Universalis ready to go. We hope this video was of help, and if it was, please take a moment to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. This is Legendary Tactics. Thank <laughs> you.